Empire. Drew Brees gets another career milestone, but can this season end with an even bigger accomplishment? We're talking Drew Brees and his touchdown pass record with Amy Just of the Times Picune. This is the Football Jones Podcast. What's up, everybody? It's Mike Jones. Read me at usatoday.com. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ByMikeJones. And as I said, yes, I wanted to look back at Drew Brees' touchdown passing record that he set Monday night. And we're going to talk to Saints beat writer Amy Just of the Times Picune and um, just kind of get a, a look into what that night was like, what um, goes into Drew Brees' effectiveness, and you know where he stands among the all-time great quarterbacks, and you know what what the postseason could mean, what it could unfold and look like for the Saints. And so let's get to it right now. My visit with Amy Just of the Times Picune. All right, here we are with Amy Just, one of the Saints beat writers. Amy, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. So I wanted to talk to you about the Saints um, as they're coming off of that big win um, and, you know, a historic night for Drew Brees. Um, what was it like? You know, what was the mood like, the, the atmosphere when he got that record? So it was a little anticlimactic, actually, because he thought he had it um, – Earlier in the game, he connected with Traquan Smith for what would have been the record-breaking touchdown, but Smith was called for offensive pass interference. Uh, whether you agree with the call or not is up to you. But, yeah, so they were celebrating. The dome was going crazy. And then the ref comes on and says offensive pass interference, no touchdown. So the dome starts booing. Everybody's angry because, like, they had announced that over the intercom that he had broken the record on that touchdown and then it comes back. So, but when it did happen, everybody was excited. Drew was excited again. I mean, he got to celebrate twice, so that's pretty cool. But, but yeah, no, that, yeah. Even when you break records, got to do it twice. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. Um, you know, after the game, um, you know, obviously on the field, you know, it's probably a special moment um, after the game. Um, what did you gather from the guys in the locker room, from Drew himself? Um, obviously, he knew where he was, you know, in reach of, but I'm sure it still had to mean something to him. Yeah, he uh, he's had a really long career, and he's done a lot of really impressive things. Uh, I mean, he broke two records mm-hmm. on Monday. Uh, single game passing uh, or completion percentage, like 96.7% if you round up, which is bananas. But, you know, he, whether this is true or not, he deflects a lot. Uh, Before the game even started, when he talked to us last Wednesday, um, you know, he talked about how he knew it was coming, but we can't pay attention to that. But he did say, and I found this really interesting, that he, he prepares for everything. So he does all of his reps and, all of that and he practiced he practices for the stoppage of time for when he breaks records which I found that really interesting because he doesn't want to get out of it mentally okay so he can he can focus you know going into it he breaks the record you know knows how to deal with that situation and then can go back into playing the rest of the game which I thought, huh, that's that's something I would never think about, right? Is that you have to mentally prepare yourself to move on after you do something that's, that can be pretty emotional for people. Right, right. Um, why do you think it is? I mean, obviously, he's one of the greats. He's probably a first ballot Hall of Famer. But it still feels like he's always kind of behind, you know, when you talk about the the, the great quarterbacks, he's not at the top of the list. You know, it's there's Brady, there's – you know, you t- Manning, there's, you know, you even 
talk about Aaron Rodgers or, you know, but he kind of, see, it seems like he still kind of gets overlooked. I think that's a testament to just how good quarterbacks have been in the last 10, 15 years. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't talk about everybody. Yeah. Somebody gets left out and whether it's right or not, it's true. But as Drew's can, career continues, no matter whether that only lasts four more games or four more years or who knows. I mean, the man looks great right now. But you have to think that he will – I don't know why he's getting looked over. I can't speak to that. But as his career continues, you have to look to him because he's breaking every single record. Like, he's only got a couple more that he can get and he's on track to get one more by the end of the season which is Brett Favre's uh, attempts record which not as much fanfare with that right but still that's another one yeah yeah I guess it's kind of the curse of being in this generation because obviously you know if you don't get six rings you know you're gonna be like Brady um you know other guys have multiples you know maybe you know who knows if you can get a multiple um this year we'll find out uh, won't we right right um I wondered something with him being that injury that he had midway through, you know, that he was out for a chunk of the season. Has that helped him? You know, I was asked this the other day. Um, has that helped him remain fresh um, and, and kind of helped him be effective down the stretch here, you think? I think that it's helped his mentality, right? So he had only missed one game due to injury in his entire career and he's played for 19 years I mean he's going to be 41 years old less than a month from now um but it being out for so long you know kind of rekindled his love for the game not that he didn't love it before mm -hmm. but it just kind of showed him what you know he was missing out on because this hadn't been an experience that he that he'd had being out for so long I think it helps that they were winning as well, you know, because, mm -hmm. you know, you don't want to – that's a tough situation to be in. But, you know, he he talked about how he wanted to get back. And being out for so long, I think, has just helped him in – he wants to win. This means a lot to him. And it just gave him a different perspective that he hadn't had in being away for, from the game for – five weeks mm -hmm. what are you expecting um for them their chances in the playoffs because obviously you've got breeze um who's great although his numbers in the red zone aren't the the most amazing um and their defense can look like you know amazing one week and then look like they forget to show up another one um what's your feel of their capability yeah, it they're they've been a weird team, right? You've got games where they look unbeatable, like Monday against the Colts. I mean, they're just is a bloodbath. Um and then they lose to the Falcons, who at that point maybe Dan Quinn was gonna get fired after that game, right? Like we won't know we don't know that now, but what happened there you know it's just so I don't know what to expect from them you know because they play a really good game against the 49ers but their defense gets torched right um yeah I I don't know what to expect from them I do know that a three seed probably won't end up well for them just because that's one extra game and then that's going on the road mm -hmm. and right now that could be Green Bay depending on what happens this week which if I was a professional football player living in Louisiana I would not want to play a playoff game in Green Bay Wisconsin in January right. I wouldn't I wouldn't want to do it are there a lot of Wisconsin guys on this roster yes but not everybody from Wisconsin <laughs> So, yeah, that cold weather, man, I, ooh, that, that doesn't bode well. But yeah. it's still possible that the Saints can get a one or a two seed, which would be good for them. But they do need help 
right? They need the Vikings to beat the Packers this week, and they need the Seahawks to win the West. Mm -hmm. Not out of the realm of possibility, but yeah, I don't want to throw a prediction out there until things get set because the NFC has been a bit of a roller coaster with its shooting. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> up and down. One week the 49ers is the top seed. The next week it's the Seahawks. Then it's back to the 49ers. Then it's back to Seahawks. Um, you know, all this jostling, which makes for compelling football. And it's great, you know, uh, for the it fans does. and for us and everything like that. Um, Alvin Kamara, what, what's the deal with him? Um, he has not been um, as potent as we're, we're known for him to be. Is it because of that, the lack of um, – um, Mark Ingram? Um, is, it, is it something else? What have you observed this year? Yeah, so this is my first season covering them. So I only had a taste of it last year uh, when I covered the NFC Championship game of all games to cover. <laughs> you know? right. um, but yeah, his numbers are down. He did miss a couple games due to injury and a lot of people have been you know, fans on Twitter and whatnot. What what credence you want to put into that or anything, but it's like, oh, you know, Alvin's still hurt. Alvin missed Mark. And when we talked to Alvin in the locker room last week, he's like, miss Mark, but like, I'm okay. Like, I'm not sad. Like somebody tweeted the picture from, I don't know what game it was at him. It's like, you look sad. I'm not sad. Like it'll, it'll come is what Sean's saying, what Drew's saying, what he's saying. Um, sometimes there are just dips in game. Um, and that's really the explanation that he gave. It's not that he's not trying. It's not that, you know, he doesn't want to play anymore or anything crazy conspiracy theories like that. Sometimes that happens. And I don't know if their defenses are, for game planning him more, mm -hmm. whether because at the beginning of the season, if you remember, he had this crazy, you know, uh, broken tackles right. streak or whatever, you know, average. I don't remember what the number was. It was so long ago, but it led the league by a huge margin. And I don't know if defenses have ever been doing something to combat that, mm -hmm. um, which in theory would result in less yards if you're breaking less tackles. So that's one potential theory. Right, right. Yeah. What, what is, what, what's the deal with the defense? So a lot of injuries, um, but what's their prospects for getting back to full strength by the time that the regular season ends? Yeah, they're really hurt. Um, but everybody is, right? That's right. not an excuse that you can have. Uh, thankfully for the Saints, they're really deep at defensive line, um, which is good for them. Uh, Cam playing well, mm -hmm. voted to his fourth or fifth Pro Bowl uh, yesterday. Don't exactly remember, but it's a lot. Um, and then you have Trey Hendrickson, who wasn't starting, but has been playing a really key role. And now he's a starter with Marcus Davenport going on IR. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's interesting having two linebackers out for a game, not great. Um, but AJ Klein came back last week. Uh, it was interesting though that Manti Teo started uh, last week there. Um, didn't see that coming, uh, especially with, you know, not full capacity, but getting closer. And then DBs, Von Bell didn't play. No idea how long he's gonna be out, but when, so the Saints didn't put him on IR, mm -hmm. which is a good thing for thinking that he's going to come back because uh, the Saints picked up Janoris Jenkins off of waivers right. um, and put a rookie safety on IR as the corresponding move. Mm -hmm. So that's a good thing when you're thinking, oh, who's going to come back and is are they going to be able to come back from this? Um, but yeah, man, it's pretty bleak but again they played without Vaughn against the Colts and they look fine granted completely different uh, talent level in that game yeah, but yeah. true but I mean yeah. at the same time 
um, there weren't any open receivers. I mean, every time Jacoby Brissett was throwing the ball, I mean, there was guys were just blanketed. Um, so if they're, they're backups, obviously, like you said, you know, they're not going against a bunch of pro bowl guys, but if their backups were able to play at that level, you would hope that that bodes well for them once they get, you know, if they can get healthy um, for this stretch. Run. One thing, yeah. One thing I want to, I'm going to pay attention to closely this week is the health of uh, CJ Gardner Johnson. Okay. Uh, he filled in for, uh, PJ Williams when PJ Williams was suspended and then he filled in for Von Bell last week. Uh, CJ left the game with a concussion uh, late in the game. Uh, so we'll see how much at all he practices this week. Again, concussions are, they differ person to person, all that stuff. But yeah, so that's something I'm going to be watching just because he's one of their more versatile guys back there. Gotcha. Gotcha. Back to Drew Brees, um, what kind of a sense do you guys get as far as um, his future, what he's, what he's got left motivationally-wise? Will it depend on, you know, if they win a Super Bowl? Um, or I know they're high on Teddy, but um, his contract, you know, is coming up. Uh, what, do you, what, do you, what sense, if any, have you gotten on Drew's future? Well, he hated missing all that time, mm -hmm. right? So... I don't know. There are some days where you think, well, if they win a Super Bowl, maybe he'll hang it up. But since he missed so much time, is he ready? Does he want one more? Mm -hmm. I mean, based on how he looks, he looks like he could play for a, a while. Yeah. I mean, that was the statistically one of the best games by an NFL quarterback in the league's history. Yeah. With When you look at how many touchdowns, how many yards, and the completion percentage. So and he's 40 yeah. almost 41 so yeah I don't know my personal plan is to stay here until he retires <laughs> and then I'll figure it out from there um but who knows when that could be you know because everybody wants to go out on top yeah. but if you're not ready you're not ready right. and based on the way he looked yesterday he could play for a while gotcha now Amy you um you've covered she, you know, we went back to the Washington Post days, covered the Redskins. <laughs> um, you've covered a lot of college uh, sports. Um, first year, full time on the Saints beat. What has it been like? And what's one of the most um, interesting things you've learned about the Saints now that you're up close? Because you were covering LSU. So you were familiar mm -hmm. with everything with the Saints. But being up close every single day, what's one thing that you've really learned about what makes them go and just about that organization, the team, coaches? Yeah, it. I didn't realize just how weird it is to have a starting quarterback and a head coach be together for so long. Uh -huh. Like, you, oh yeah, you know, you know Tom Brady and Bill Belichick and whatever. But like, you know, that's it's not normal. Like, we talk about it like it's normal, not normal. Right. Um, and I think that's helped them in their success. Is that there hasn't been a whole lot of movement there. You know, the key, key pieces change around them, but it's been pretty stable. Now, they've had their ups and downs. Right. They've had their share of not-so-great seasons, but it's, it's actually pretty cool to think about that, that they've been together for so long. They've been, they've been together – at this franchise since I was in sixth grade. <laughs> like, that's a long time. <laughs> <laughs> not as long as when I was in sixth grade, but still it's a long time. Um, yeah, so, so for the listeners, I'm 25. Yeah. So. so do you hear that, what do you see about that, that unity, that cohesion that, that just suggests um, their special bond? I mean, Sean trusts Drew and that's I mean that's it like you know they're they've been together for so long like that's an incredibly long relationship to have and so over time you build that trust you build that rapport you know them better than you know your spouse almost because they're together more than their, their families right exactly so you know they're they know each other so well. And that showed when Drew was coming back from surgery, mm -hmm. um, when he was going through his process. 
because <laughs> Drew, I don't remember if that was in a radio interview that he did with the flagship station or if it was with us, but uh, he, Drew said something to the effect of, when I'm ready, I'll tell Sean and I'll go. Uh -huh. Like, that's just, doesn't usually work that way. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, good deal. Well, it's going to be interesting to see how the play season plays out for them. I would love to see Drew Brees um, get uh, – one more ring at some point It'd be great if it was this year um or some point before he retires uh, but we'll see but amy tell everybody where they can find you yeah so i tweet everything i do good and bad takes included at uh, amy underscore just i spell my name a little weird so it's at amy a-m-i-e underscore j-u-s-t like the word all right and online outside of twitter Yes, online, outside of Twitter, for all of you smart people who don't engage with uh, that. Um, NOLA.com uh, has everything New Orleans related, whether that's hurricanes and explosions and buildings falling down. But if you just want to read my same stuff, you can go to NOLA.com back, backslash sports backslash things. There we go. All right, Amy, thanks so much. And hopefully I will see you down the road once we get to the playoffs. I know, I haven't seen you in like three, four years. I know, I haven't been able to get to New Orleans this season. I've been out west like four times, five times, and not to New Orleans. I keep on asking and get bumped off somewhere else, but hopefully postseason, I'll be there. We will well. be reunited eventually. That was my visit with Amy. It's going to be really interesting to see how things play out. I feel like the Saints have everything it takes to win a Super Bowl, but I just don't know the there's consistency issues there um, that that kind of concern me when it comes to their defense. Um, and you know, earlier this week I did a story where I was talking about the reasons to believe in these playoff clinching teams and reasons to worry about them. And you know, the the kind of up and down ways of the defense is the big reason that I just kind of wonder um, about the Saints. Uh, I, I definitely think that Breeze, Michael Thomas, Alvin Kamara, if he's on, um, that, you know, they have what it takes offensively. We've seen they can score with the best of them, but can they stop them? Um, but, you know, there's, there's questions about every single team. Uh, the 49ers, my big question is about Jimmy Garoppolo. They've got the great defense. They've got some decent skill position players. Um, we've seen improvement out of Garoppolo as the season has uh, gone down the stretch. He's going to be tested um, this week when um, they they face the Rams and then they close out the season trying to lock up the division uh, next week. Um, but can he put this team on his back if he has to? That's a big question. Um, when it comes to the Seahawks, no doubts about Russell Wilson and their defense is playing well. My question is just about the the skill position players around Russell Wilson. Yes, they can run the ball well. Losing Josh Gordon kind of hurts. DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett are good young receivers. Um, Metcalf is is still growing, um, but can they elevate their game further so that way? Say Russell Wilson can't get that perfect pass. Can somebody go get that ball? Um, and their defense, you know, if Russell Wilson's having an off day, can they bail him out? I think that they should be able to, but I don't know. When it comes to uh, the AFC, the Patriots, obviously the big question, you know, obviously you believe in them because of Tom Brady and Bill Belichick and their resume. The questions, though, that offense, it is not the same. Um, but down the stretch of the postseason, when Bill Belichick has time to game plan for each opponent that he probably will have seen a second time. Will they be more effective? Possibly. I don't know. But that's the question that they've got to answer. Uh, when you look at the Kansas City Chiefs, it looks like they're hitting their stride right now. Patrick Mahomes is healthy again. Uh, he's reconnecting with Tyreek Hill. They hadn't had a you know big play connection uh, for like nine weeks or something like that. They can run the football. Their defense has been the question about them. 
but we're seeing them elevate their play. Their secondary is finally starting to have some cohesion. They added Terrell Suggs. It's going to be interesting to see what he does for them in their pass rush because they've needed a stronger defensive front. Again, they've shown improvement as they've finally gotten comfortable with Steve Spagnuolo's system. But again, consistency. That's what you're looking for with them. When it comes to a team like the Buffalo Bills, no questions about their defense. They can play with anybody out there. But Josh Allen, that offense, they're they're not quite, you know, potent enough to to win a shootout. If you're you're going against somebody um, that's got a special player like Lamar Jackson or a potent offense like the Chiefs, um, you know, we'll see what happens Sunday, uh, Saturday. I'm really curious to see how they play against the Patriots in their rematch. They they very well could have beaten them last time if Josh Allen didn't get hurt. But can they do it at a consistent level? And when you look at um, you know the, uh, the the Baltimore Ravens, probably my least amount of questions there. Of all the teams, they've got a very good defense. They've got an amazing offense because of Lamar Jackson. But he doesn't have a lot of experience in the postseason. So what happens when he faces Tom Brady and Bill Belichick? Have to you know Bill Belichick and that defense really um, a second time? What will they game plan to take away from him? Can he, if he's forced to stay in the pocket, can he win with his arm? That's the question there. He's shown ability um, that even when defenses have a beat on what he's doing, he's got that escapability. So maybe he can negate that. It's going to be interesting to see. I don't know about you guys. Yes, there's a couple seeding things that have to be worked out, but I'm ready for the playoffs to start right now. I think it's going to be an exciting postseason. Uh, We just got to get through these next two weeks here, figure out who the other four teams are, because right now eight teams have clinched. Figure out who else is going to be in the uh, the tournament, uh, if you will. And um, then all the fireworks can start going. Well, I hope you guys have a great day. Um, I will talk to you Monday morning. Again, read me at usatoday.com. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at ByMikeJones. And keep coming back to the Football Jones Podcast.